I know very little in an analytical sense about Brazil. I'm more a foreign policy practitioner and uh, I have in fact uh, previously been ambassador to Argentina uh, and so tend to have a slight bias in any of the perceptions I have from that particular part of the world. So firstly, I apologize uh, for the inevitable limitations that will place on anything I say. And I regret too that I haven't been able to attend all of the conference, but I would like at the very start, Sean, to say what an enormously valuable exercise I think this has been. Uh, it's been very refreshing from my perspective to hear the very broad range of eliminating views which have been brought to bear on this very interesting question of Brazil's rise and the regional reactions of other countries to it, as opposed to sometimes the broader questions of what Brazil's rise means globally. And indeed, that's the context in which we in Australia look at not only Brazil, but Latin America more generally. It's uh, very evident that uh, Brazil uh, is increasing um, in terms of both its regional and its global role. Uh, and uh, Australia has been responding to that by engaging more deeply, both with Latin America and specifically uh, with Brazil as was reflected in the entering into a strategic partnership with Brazil in June this year when the Prime Minister visited, uh, I'm sorry to say for the first time. I'm not sorry that she visited, but rather that it should have been the first time. Uh, I think, however, given the acknowledgement of the changing dynamics of Latin America, we will see that position uh, change uh, in the coming period with an increased level of international of a ministerial and high level engagement not only with Brazil but with the other countries of Latin America. Now uh, from my perspective the conference has actually posed a number of really interesting questions and perhaps I could just uh, share what those are with me with, with you. Um, I was very interested in the questions that uh, Marup Doctor and Sandra Border raised about the question of whether Brazil needs the region in order to become a global power, whether it needs to be a regional hegemon to actually uh, uh, perform that role. I don't think that question was fully teased out um, and it was one which I found particularly interesting. I have to say that it is not my impression that that is indeed Brazil's uh, intent to become a regional hegemon. And uh, I don't know from the discussions that we've had here, uh, from the reactions of regional countries, that it would be in a position to do so, even if it were so inclined. Nor indeed that it is actually necessary for it to do that, to adopt a global role. But it's a very interesting uh, set of questions which I would certainly welcome a lot more discussion of. I think there's been a particularly interesting discussion on the model of economic development uh, Brazil has presented which was characterized uh, by Carlos Pio, state interventionist policies uh, of picking winners, subsidized credit, protectionism and so on. And I was interested to see uh, the undercurrent um, that there are aspects in which Brazil is moving away from seeking economic integration to greater cooperation and the possibility of developing new forms of integration. And I suppose that contrasted with the alternative model of development which is presented, I suppose, at one end by uh, Chile and by uh, the countries of the Pacific Alliance uh, of a more open, less interventionist approach uh, uh, with a strong emphasis on Asia. Of course, I'm not saying necessarily that those are in entirely uh, in contradiction to each other, but nonetheless a number of people uh, have suggested um, that there is a level of competition between those models and I think someone posed the question of whether the development of the Pacific Alliance was indeed um, part of a counterbalancing to Brazil's rise. Another set I think of very interesting questions which uh, went into the broader discussion of the relative um, evolution, the relative weights of political and economic objectives in relation to the various regional and sub-regional bodies. 
which I think has been uh, a really valuable one. It's evident there is a level of rivalry among them. Um, there is uh, uh, both in, in terms of the genesis uh, of those bodies and part of their evolution. It's also been very interesting to see how uh, objectives which may have been at uh, one point primarily um, economic to begin with have morphed into a greater political role and vice versa. I think frankly you would have to always argue that uh, regional integration will always have both a political and economic um, component uh, to it. But I would be very interested uh, to have more of a discussion of that dynamic uh, and where people actually see that going. Uh, President Premiera was asked exactly the same question on Monday and he gave, I thought, the supremely diplomatic answer that it was perfectly reasonable to have alternative methods of development, but over time they would coalesce into a particular form of Latin American regionalism and integration. Well, I leave that question um, out there. Another of the sub-themes of the conference that I thought has been particularly interesting from my perspective has been the role of mining in resources development, uh, in national development. That's clearly an area that Australia has a keen interest in as our resource companies are very active um, in Latin America. While I would argue that it's evident from Australia's experience that mining can be a highly productive driver of national development if it is carried out in an appropriate regulatory environment and with the involvement of local communities. From a regional perspective, it's been very interesting to hear questions being raised in some countries about Brazil's projection in this sector with large-scale Brazilian contractors funded by Brazil's development banks. It's another area, I think, in which the nexus uh, between economic and political factors uh, in the process of in integration are very important. And also came out in the last discussion, which unfortunately I missed most of, in relation to wages development and uh, the whole process of education and uh, human development um, uh, and the interaction with labour exploitation. So I just wanted to say, Sean, uh, from my perspective, it's been a fascinating window onto a series of really interesting questions which you have posed here, which I think will help uh, all participants and certainly myself from the point of view of a government uh, practitioner involved in the region to develop a much greater understanding of it. And I would be certainly very interested in the course of the next uh, hour if some of those questions that I've posed, and they are by no means the only ones which I'm sure people will have on their minds, were uh, to be discussed. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Sean. Uh, my first word is uh, concerns, uh, congrats, extending congratulations to you and to everybody at the ANU uh, who was involved in preparing this, this meeting. Uh, it's good to know that uh, in Australia, 2012, people are taking uh, their time to discuss a bit more about Brazil. I really appreciate it and extend uh, my compliments to each of the participants. I very much followed the, the comments and really scribbled quite a number of notes. That's, uh, I think it says something about the sort of uh, importance that we did attribute to the comments that were made here. Uh, at the same time, I think it's only fair that I express, as a Brazilian living abroad, some sort of surprise concerning the reactions that I gathered uh, representing uh, the views and the ideas of some of our neighbors, uh, even some of Brazilians, uh, and uh, anyway, reflections from countries uh, within Latin America. Uh, my uh, view is that, uh, unfortunately, we pose much more than a threat than, as, uh, than uh, an expression of hope. And uh, it's, uh, as a diplomat, I should say that I look at that as being very much unfortunate. Because in my view, we are not being understood 
and uh, in this maybe we are failing heavily. Uh, for those who have at a certain point lived in Brazil must have realized that on a day-to-day -day basis it is a basic concern in my country of uh, making the best about projecting a good image of Brazilians and of Brazil in Brazil and abroad. And I think that uh, uh, for the knowledge that we do have of history in the world, what we've been trying to do in the last 10 years is to a certain extent to avoid previous mistakes. So uh, there were particular uh, mentions that were made this afternoon to, to which I would like very much to make specific comments. Uh, for instance, when uh, uh, it is mentioned that uh, the foreign policy of Brazil looks very much after the Brazilian development. I would like to know what would be the other use of that. That's why uh, what the way we see it inside Brazil is that we are owing to the Brazilian population the kind of development that has been denied to us for a number of decades. And it looks like for the first time in quite a number of years, we had a chance to advance some, some of those efforts uh, to the benefit of our own country. It is uh, a pity again that uh, maybe we have not been uh, specifically understood that we're very much looking after ourselves. And in this case, I do have to agree with the comment about the use of our uh, foreign policy, but again, nothing that we have not uh, learned from previous ventures from, from other countries. Uh, linked to this uh, comment, I was uh, very much touched by the mention uh, during the presentation by the Colombian colleague, and this particularly struck me because I was in Colombia for three and a half years, about, and uh, John Richardson made a slight comment on that, whether to which extent uh, uh, would that be needed that uh, uh, the Brazilian involvement in uh, the region should be uh, necessary for the country to pursue specific goals. Uh, I, this, I, I was expecting some sort of uh, question, some sort of debate on that maybe we will have that later on. It's because uh, the way we see it, and, and I think it's important that we present a Brazilian view, is that uh, most of the things that, the image that were projected of ourselves to the world were projected from countries that are not located in South America. When you mentioned the, the BRICS, the BRICS was an acronym created in 2003, and uh, I think a little before that, and the BRICS were created in 2003, and we were included in that. I, I don't see any involvement of any action of ours in Latin America towards that. And it looks like it has uh, gathered some international acknowledgement since then. Uh, I would go a bit uh, beyond and maybe slightly arrogant, but comparing the countries that are included nowadays within the BRICS and uh, within the terrible GFC that we are managing every day, I still see my country as one of the best fit to, to pursue uh, uh, a career within the BRICS for a number of reasons. Uh, territorial extension, size of population, the size of the economy. It has been acknowledged that we surpassed the United Kingdom last year. It's, it's been tough to keep that way, but still trying. Um, demographics, uh, lack of serious internal conflicts. So I think there are, there are quite a number of factors that help the world, the G20, to acknowledge that we did deserve a place in, in this, uh, the place that we're trying to, to, 
to occupy in the world nowadays. And to finish, and again I apologize on that, but this is something that uh, I heard uh, Foreign Minister Celso Maureen uh, say to then uh, Foreign Minister Kevin Rudd in Brazil in 2010. Uh, we do not consider ourselves a regional power anymore, but uh, a global one. So we think we are looking at the world very much beyond Latin America. And that's, again, what struck very much to me, uh, the, the comments that appeared concerning uh, the eventual need or not for us to pursue our goals also within the, the Latin American region or eventually uh, being forced to go uh, further beyond. Thank you very much. And I'd just like to, to once again express my thanks to the Australian government for funding the conference because this wouldn't have happened without the financial help to bring everybody here. Um, my greatest thanks and admiration for my colleagues who have flown from all over the world to join here. Um, we're probably going to have to buy a couple of hundred acres of the Amazon to do the carbon sequestration to, <laughs> to, to make up for the flights. And uh, again, for John for getting ANCLAS going and getting me here so that we could do this. And to uh, Claudia Villegas for doing all of the logistical work. Um, and to Lucy uh, Foot Short for the last couple of days for helping things along. So again, thanks very much for coming and for a great couple of days.